Hello everyone, this is Mr. Lipchick, and the theme for this segment of instruction is Uniting for Independence. What were some of the events and forces that led to uh, the colonists uniting uh, and forming a united front against the British uh, to achieve their own nation? For the first 150 years of their existence, the colonies generally governed themselves. It took months to travel from England to the colonies, and the colonial legislatures ran the day-to-day -day affairs for the colonies. England did not interfere as they needed colonists to fight against French control in North America. The French and Indian War would have a major impact on the desire for independence. The French and Indian War had the effect of causing Britain to exert more control over the colonies. The British won the war and had more control over the colonies. As a result, King George III wanted more control over the colonies, wanted that to be permanent, and the British wanted to tax the colonies to help pay for the war. And in hindsight, this was really not an unreasonable request, except that uh, they, the colonists did not have representation in Parliament uh, to set these taxes, and they felt that these taxes were excessive. So the colonists, however, no longer needed protection of the French, and they were reluctant to pay the tax. And the issue became taxation without representation. High taxes were levied on tea, sugar, glass, paper, and other products, uh, which of course made the cost of living very expensive in the colonies. And England saw the colonies as a source of raw materials and wanted them only to purchase goods made in England. They didn't look at uh, the colonies as a self-governing unit with rights. The Stamp Act of 1765 levied, levied a tax on all documents. And colonists responded by boycotting British goods. By this time, England was the workshop of the world, and it would remain so into the 19th century. Uh, however, uh, colonial industries had begun to develop, uh, and colonists were kind of coming into their own economically. So resentment grew, and in 1773, colonists dressed as Mohawk Indians dumped British tea into the Boston Harbor and the Boston Tea Party. Okay, uh, you know, it's portrayed as a harmless thing, but in terms of today's dollars, the tea was worth about a million dollars. So this was a major act of vandalism. Uh, the colonists were thinly disguised. Everyone knew who they were individually, but the reason they wore the uh, Mohawk costumes was that uh, they did not want their friends to have to identify them. Uh, because they were wearing the costumes, their friends were able to say, oh, well, we didn't recognize anyone because they were in costume, when in reality, everyone knew who they were. And England, uh, of course, was very angry and passed a series of acts that became known as the Intolerable Acts. The British Parliament responded to the Boston Tea Party with the Coercive Acts, otherwise known as the Intolerable Acts. Boston Harbor was closed by the British, and this was a main source of revenue for the colonies. Massachusetts lost the right to govern itself. And the hostility between Britain and America, the American colonies was escalating rapidly. And if you look to the right, there is a picture of a taxpayer being tarred and feathered by American colonists who were not very happy. Then uh, the colonies began to look at the fact that they all had this resentment of England in common. So the colonies first viewed themselves as independent states. As British policies grew harsher, harsher however, they began to feel a sense of unity with one another. And in 1765, nine colonies sent delegates to the Stamp Act Congress 
and sent a petition to the king stating only that the colonial legislatures stating that only the colonial legislatures had the authority to levy taxes. By 1773, committees of correspondence were asking the colonists to resist Great Britain. These committees of correspondence were a very primitive version of the internet. People writing letters to one another. Snail mail. This was a network of letter writers who communicated with one another regarding political issues with Britain. And most of them were of the uh, gentleman class, because literacy at this time was not widespread. And in 1774, the First Continental Congress met and created an embargo against Britain. Basically said, we're not going to send you any products. That's what an embargo is. And England responded by declaring that the colonies were in a state of rebellion. On April 19, 1775, the British attempted to seize the weapons of a colonial militia and fought the colonists at Lexington and Concord, and this, of course, became known as the shot heard round the world. Uh, it took a lot of courage to, to confront the British. It wasn't the most successful engagement for the colonists, uh, but uh, it was the beginning. Soon after Lexington and Concord, all 13 colonies met to form the Second Continental Congress. This Congress acted as a central government for the colonies. And John Hancock was president, and George Washington was elected to run the army. And you must keep in mind, this took an enormous amount of courage for these men, because if this revolution didn't succeed, they would all most surely be hung for treason. Thomas Paine published a pamphlet called Common Sense, which had a great impact on the thinking of the colonists. Paine felt that the king was corrupt and his power was arbitrary, that is, not derived from any right. It was also widely known and believed that the king was insane. He had some very serious mental issues. He was capricious and vicious and despised, basically, King George III. In 1776, Richard Henry Lee of Virginia introduced the Declaration of Independence to Congress. All right, a little bit about the Declaration. Thomas Jefferson, a skilled writer, prepared the document. On July 2nd, 1776, it was approved by Congress. On July 4th, 1776, Congress approved the final draft. John Hancock was the first of 56 delegates to sign it. And the reason for the declarations are set out within the document itself. Declaration made the, uh, the United States the first nation founded on the principles of liberty and not some hereditary kingdom. It inspired other revolutions throughout the world, such as the French Revolution in 1789, and, for that matter, a number of Latin American revolutions. All men are created equal, with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Basically, by virtue of being a human being, you have these rights, is what they were saying. It stated that governments derive their powers from the consent of the governed. Uh, it also direct, uh, the uh, Congress also directed states to, to create their own constitutions. So Congress directed the states to draft constitutions that were best for the happiness and safety of their constituents. Within a few years, every state had a constitution, including this one. Most state constitutions contained a Bill of Rights to protect individual liberty, and all recognized limited government with powers derived from the consent of the people. Okay, that concludes our discussion. Uh, thank you for attending, and I look forward to speaking with you in the near future. Have a great day.